Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll continue to discuss the process capability and we'll talk about the process capability index or CPK. Let's do a quick recap of what all we've discussed so far. So we've talked about the specification limits as provided to us by a customer. And we've talked about a specification width, which is nothing but a USL minus LSL. We also talked about a process width, which is our processes capability, and it's typically calculated as Six Sigma. Why Six Sigma? Because in case of normal distribution, 99.73% of data points fall within plus or minus three standard deviations of the mean. So we are achieving nearly 99.7% of the target when we are taking into account three standard deviations above the mean and three standard deviations below the mean. Adding these two, it becomes six sigma. That's where we take the process width as six sigma. But let's assume that there is a shift in the process. For whatever reason, over a period of time, let's assume that our process, which used to be within the specification limits, is now either below the lower specification limits or is above the upper specification limit. As we explained earlier, that the customer is willing to buy our product only as long as we stay within the specification limits. So this shift that we observe here is actually a loss because all the products which are beyond the specification limits, whether it be below the lower specification or above the upper specification are going to get rejected. Now let's look at the formula for CP. Do you think CP alone would be able to arrest this kind of a process shift, which is really critical to the business? Well, the answer is no, because CP only takes into account two widths and it only computes a ratio. Even if your process is completely outside the specification limits, it will still be able to give you a numeric response. But the problem is in that case, we'll not be doing any good to the process. So what is the solution? And the solution to some extent comes in the form of a process capability index or CPK. As you can see, it is the minimum of USL minus mu, which is the upper specification limit minus the process mean divided by the three sigma or three standard deviation and mu minus LSL divided by three sigma, which is mean minus the lower specification limits divided by the three standard deviations. Now, why do we take the minimum here? Well, minimum is there because we want to make sure that we give importance to the specification, which is critical. Imagine yourself driving a car on a narrow road and on both sides of the road, there are boundaries of walls, which wall becomes more critical to you. Well, the one that's closer to your car, because you're more likely to hit that wall or cause some damage. Therefore, when we talk about the process capability, we need to be more careful about the specification limit, which we are about to touch or cross because that's where the damage starts. Let's see this with the help of this diagram. So in this case, we're talking about a shift to the left or it could be a shift to the right. Depending on the distance between the mean, the new mean and the specification limit, we will decide which specification limit is more critical. An important point to be noted with respect to CP, the process capability ratio and CPK, the process capability index is that CP is always greater than or equal to CPK. Now, when is it equal? Let's look at it. It's equal only in case of a perfectly centered process. Now let's try to interpret a few CPK values. Let's say CP is equal to CPK, which is equal to one, which means that the process is operating at the borderline. Well, we saw this when we discussed CP. So the width of the specifications is equal to the width of the process. Numerator is equal to denominator. CP is equal to one, which means CPK is equal to one because the process is perfectly centered, but the process is operating at the borderline. Well, it is important to note that at this stage, when your CP is equal to CPK is equal to one, the process is operating at a Sigma level of three. 
Let's just pick another case, CPK is equal to zero. It means that the process mean is overlapping with one of the specification limits. So when is a CPK less than zero? Well, it is less than zero when the mean of the process has gone beyond the specification limits. So either it has gone below the lower specification limits or above the upper specification limits. So when does a CPK lie between a zero and one? Well, these are the cases where the mean of the process lies between the specification limits, but some part of the process has started going beyond the specification limits, either below the lower specification or above the upper specification. So we are not running a highly capable process. It's deteriorating, but the mean is still within the specification limits here. Now let's discuss when CPK would be greater than one. Well, it definitely implies that the process is well within the specification limits. But if we try to visualize it, there could be multiple possibilities. Possibility one is that your process is perfectly centered and it is well within the specification limits. Possibility two is that the process is not centered. Still, it is within the specification limits. So you see that the mean has shifted here a little bit, but the process is still within the specification limits. It used to be at the dotted red line earlier. Now it is at the white line, but still within the specification limits. The possibility three could be that the mean again has shifted onto the other side, but the process is still within the specification limits. So in all these cases, our CPK value would be greater than one. As a rule of thumb, higher the CP or CPK values, higher the sigma level. But CP or CPK greater than three implies there are loose specification limits, which means we are very lenient in assigning the specification limits. So the specifications might have to be revisited in such a case. In general, CP or CPK greater than 1.33 is considered good. And you must note that CP is equal to 1.33 means that it is a sigma level four. Why? Because USL minus LSL is equal to eight sigma divided by six sigma. You cancel it out, four by three is equal to 1.33. Now let's discuss what would be the CP and CPK for a centered process with six sigma specifications. Your customer wants you to deliver six sigma capability. What would be the CP and CPK? Well, if the process is centered, then CP is equal to CPK and it's easy to compute CP. In case of a six sigma process, the specification width USL minus LSL is equal to 12 sigma. The width of the process is six sigma. So when we take the ratio of these two, the value that we get for CP is two. And as this is a centered process, CP is equal to CPK. So the CPK also becomes two. Let's just make it a little trickier here and consider a case of shift. As we saw on the first slide, that CP does not get affected by the shift, but CPK does because CPK is relative to the centricity of the process. So let's just assume that there is a shift in the process mean. The same process that we discussed has now got its process mean shifted towards the USL by 1.5 standard deviations or 1.5 sigma. Let's try to analyze how it affects CP and CPK values. So if we have to calculate the CPK, now USL is becoming critical. The distance is minimizing onto the side of USL. If we have to compute that, we need to get USL minus mu. But since it is a six sigma process, we know that from the middle red dot line to the upper specification limit, the distance is six sigma. Therefore, we can calculate USL minus mu as six sigma minus 1.5 sigma, which is nothing but 4.5 sigma. So we can fit in 4.5 standard deviations between the upper specification limit and the new shifted mean which implies that our CPK is nothing but USL minus mu divided by three sigma or 1.5, which was 
2 in case of a perfectly centered process. But does it in any way affect the CP value? No, the CP value remains the same because it is just a comparison of width. Therefore, when talking about the process capability, there are two important factors. One, that the process should operate within the specification limits. And the second point is that we should also be checking the proximity of the process mean with the mean of the specifications that have been provided to us. Therefore, we've just seen that CP alone, while is a measure of process capability, might not be able to depict the right picture. And hence, we look at CPK, which takes into account the position of our process mean with respect to the specification limits. This completes our introduction to the process capability. If you like this video, please don't forget to share and subscribe. Thank you.